going to give you our sustainability project head, a sustainability forum project head, and one of the columnists of Manila Bulletin. A round of applause, please, for Mr. Philip Kuenhing. Um, thank you very much, USD, for having us. Um, before I begin anything, I'd just like to mention that about a week and a half ago, we sent an MB team, video team here to the USD campus, and they were doing some uh, video content about what students thought about sustainability. And um, I just want to let you guys know, we were very encouraged by the answers that we got. I don't know if you guys studied before you were interviewed, but um, there were people talking about how it's a system, about longevity, about consciousness, and I especially liked one student who talked about it's more than just slapping a green label on something. I think that's very important for us to realize. Um, we have a lot of people talking about sustainability now, but um, there are those who will also use it as just a means to join the bandwagon. And I think it's upon you guys, the students, and the people who are really um, discerning in terms of what sustainability is supposed to mean that you will be able to judge and say who are really doing something that's within the sustainability um, scope of what we're trying to hope to do. No? Because if you think about it, um, the news isn't very optimistic. No? I mean, if you talk of COP29, it looks like there will be a 1.5 degree increase in the world's temperature by next year, in 2025. And you might think, hey, 1.5 doesn't mean a lot. But if you look from an agricultural standpoint, that will mean a lot in terms of drought levels, in terms of uh, agricultural output for the Philippines next year. And those are all things we have to think about. Um, we are, um, if we, the Philippines is sort of number one in something, apparently it's number one in being the most vulnerable to natural disasters. That's a fact that we have to face. And um, ironically, it's the ones who are most affected by these disasters that are the least conscious of what sustainability is all about. So we have to really push that awareness uh, factor and uh, sustainability trickling down to be a conscious um, part of what people understand and imbibe. You know? So we're talking about resilience here. Um, we are really happy in terms of the people that we brought together here, the companies that are here together. And um, we have uh, several companies who have really instilled sustainability into the DNA of their corporation. If you look back maybe 15, 20 years ago, a lot of what was encompassed by sustainability today was covered under CSR. It was like what people thought of as corporate social responsibility. And if you really think about it, and you're very cynical, corporate social responsibility was often thought of, of people who were just feeling guilty about all the money they're making, and so they try to give back to society. Um, we've seen a change in that, and I think you have to be encouraged by what's happening now. That sustainability is part of the OPEX, operating expenditures of a lot of these companies. It's not just something they think of as an afterthought. And so I want you to appreciate what uh, the companies later on will be talking about and see it as a possibility of where your futures lie. Because like um, I'll just mention, for example, in passing, Noah Boitis Power, who will be speaking this morning, just received a Golden Arrow Award, third year in a row, for compliance to high corporate governance standards. And I think we should congratulate them on that because a lot of people talk about environment and the social agenda, but people don't really concentrate on the governance side, the, ES the G of the ESG agenda of, um, of what companies are supposed to do about sustainability. And then maybe just as a preview for this afternoon, because I know a lot of you will be attending this morning and maybe you aren't going to be coming back in the afternoon, but if you do, and or if you want to let other people know, we'll also have RLC residences uh, later this afternoon and they, are the property guru and dot property developers of the year. And along with IFC, they, who are awarding the EDGE certifications, they committed to develop over 1 million square meters of net zero carbon and resilient condos by 2031. No? So that's um, something that we should also be looking forward to in terms of their talking. And then we have Ayala Land, who will be here this afternoon talking about uh, different things. But um, just so that you guys know, their net income for the first half of 2024 rose by 15% to 13.1 billion. And before you think of that in terms of just, oh, ang yaman pala nila, no? Uh, you have to realize that um, you can't continue your sustainability programs if you're not making money. Because a lot of these are publicly listed companies. 
these publicly listed companies have a responsibility also to their shareholders. So they have to show profitability. And that's where I go back to what I was saying, that unless it's part of the OPEX, but it's also done in a way that's profitable, then these companies won't survive being sustainability. So we have to understand how um, ESG plus P, meaning profitability, have to go hand in hand to really make these companies be able to thrive and survive while being sustainable. And um, later this afternoon, we'll also have SMDC, who basically embraced innovation and tech, partnering with Seafood City in terms of bringing different ways for um, the selling of their condos to be done with the global Filipinos. So it's just a different ways of sort of like addressing the situation and pushing the sustainability uh, program forward. But for me, in the end of the day, um, while we do this forum is because, or this focus session today is because the conversation has to be amplified. I think um, a lot of times it's still the knee-jerk reaction of pangmayaman lang yung sustainability or bahala na yung corporation to do it. No? So I think it's really you guys who have to really push forward the agenda and the conversation. And because when we talk about, or when you hear the companies later on talk about targets of 2030, 2040, uh, for me, like I'm 69 years old, hindi na ako yun. Um, that 2040 target is for you guys. So hopefully you'll understand and take seriously what you will hear today. So thank you very much and um, let's hear from these people now. Thank you.